This Ridley O is sponsored by friends of BitcoinStore.com. Well, after I completed my video called uh, something like Federal's Saving Graces, actually I'm using the term video loosely since it was more of an audio. Uh, well, anyway, one of my uh, viewers had this to say, quote, your last words here re resonated profoundly. What we all want is prosperity for our children. It's almost worth doing a redundant second video, like a rewind version of this one, where that's your starting point, and you present the same points in reverse order. In this case, it bears repeating. Unquote. That's from Apagagugu. One <laughs> my viewers. I think my last point in that video that he's talking about was where I said that basically both Federals and Liberty folk do want the same thing in the sense they want their children to prosper. And the fact is, if we get our way, it's possible for both their children and our children to prosper. If they get their way, then only their children can prosper. It's not a zero-sum game on our end. But anyway, I'd been meaning to do a second video on this subject of Federal Saving Graces, because the fact is, in seven minutes, I really didn't get to all the Federal's Saving Graces. Of course, the federal government's an evil institution, and even some of the nice things I had to say about the feds in the last video were probably a little overstated. For instance, this whole idea that the federals are not, that they're not infected with an ethnic nationalist virus, that may be a little too forgiving, because if you look at some of Obama's com comments lately, they do seem to be a little bit Milosevician in the sense that they seem to be tailored to maybe increasing racial tensions a little bit rather than the other way around. And again, that's another American-Yugoslav parallel as to how government people, when they start getting desperate, they will see, in many cases, in many countries, they see ethnic nationalism as a way to hold on to their power longer. Of course, Slobodan Milosevic was the number one example of this, where he broke with the multi-ethnicist communist party and basically took down the leadership of Serbia, which was multi-ethnicist in its orientation. He took it down and became the ethnically oriented leader of Serbia, <clears throat> sort of a coup within the system. Believe you me, it didn't take him long to make those Yugo communists look good in comparison to him. Of course, he was a Yugo communist himself, but he just he followed the power trail. You know, wherever the people were rioting, that's where he wanted to go, whatever direction they were rioting in. Anyway, Obama, for all the people he's killed, is not as much of an ethnocentricist as, uh, as Milosevic was. And I'd like to note something about the federal government that's... Again, you, you, you might not get this if you were doing our kind of activism in some countries. And that is that, like, for instance, if you look at New Hampshire, there's been a 10-year history of federal personnel basically treating us pretty professionally. There have been some arrests. I was one of them. Arrested for handing out flyers. Uh, but I've never sensed... You know, I've never sensed a taunting disposition, for the most part, from the feds. There's one exception... And that was a case back in 2005 where an FBI agent tried to recruit me to be an informant. Uh, that in and of itself was not too much of a big deal. I just reported that to the public and he pretty much went away. But there was, there was one time where he saw me right after I had, you know, spent a few days spewing information about him to the public. He knew at that point we weren't going to be getting together for lunch, but... He came over to me and tried to give all my friends the impression that we were buddies, he and I. Clapped me on the back. You know, I mean, if I did that to him, I'd be arrested, right? But it was, you know, that was a pretty tight-knit group in those days, and they didn't really uh, didn't really fall for his act. Neither did I. But uh, it was kind of creepy behavior on his part. But again, that's the only case I can think of in, in interacting with the feds, except for maybe a couple of... Uh, uncomfortable stares um, where they seem to behave unprofessionally toward me or anyone in my vicinity. You know, the president of the Free State Project, uh, Varen Swearingen, former president, has, has met with the then U.S. Marshal. I guess this would have been around 2008. They had lunch together. Yes, these are people who may kill us someday, <laughs> but 
Again, the situation is not the kind of thing that you were seeing in Egypt before the revolution, where people were just disappearing and being tortured and no one knew where they were, or similar situations in Argentina. I've generally felt like I was treated as a real human being and an important political threat at the same time uh, by members of this institution in in uh, in what in, uh, in, uh, in in New Hampshire, the, the feds in New Hampshire. But again, they treat us better in New Hampshire than you will see feds treating people who stand up in other states. It's just it's night and day almost compared to what people have been going through in in Philadelphia area and you know Mid Atlantic. What Adam Kokesh is going through. You've heard my stories in detail if you go back to the 2007 videos. I've recounted very exhaustively all the interesting things that, that happened to me when I was uh, imprisoned by the feds for four days over the outlaw leafleting. Well, again, it was pretty respectful treatment, and uh, th they didn't have to treat me that way. They had me behind closed doors. There weren't any independent cameras to verify any mistreatment. And although the imprisonment itself was mistreatment, again, this was not this was not 1984 Argentina happening. Uh, maybe I should say 1981 Argentina. But anyway, <laughs> my viewer asked me to elaborate on the idea that feds and free staters both want prosperity for their children, and that's a common denominator that could be built on. I'm not sure how to build on it, but heck. I am the official spokesperson for the win-win party, right? So you'd think I should be able to come up with something. Well, the fact is, right now all I can think of is, what are your ideas? Are there any? Is there a way that liberty activists and their tormentors can find some kind of common ground, some kind of win-win solution? Maybe it's not possible. Maybe it's better to just go ahead and peaceably continue fighting them as hard as we can and peaceably... Knocking them down wherever we can, probably that's appropriate. But thoughts become things, and it's good to have a, a goal that we can work toward that they like or can live with. Traditionally, authoritarian governments kind of like or can live with the idea of a, of a frontier on their borders where their dissidents can go, a release valve. New Hampshire does need to serve as that. We don't have any kind of other frontier in America right now. Space is closed to the public, essentially. Of course, you got to wonder if a government that essentially closes space to the public or makes you know heavy regulations on space travel, they must be pretty actively involved in trying to stop a frontier from developing, and then maybe they would be actively involved in stopping that here in New Hampshire. But so far they haven't done much in this direction, and maybe the current situation is just the best we can hope for. There is still a little bit of stability in the U.S. That could be gone in five years, and we could be missing it. The feds will be the reason that it's gone, if it ever is. And you know, I guess I have an unrelated thought, but it's sort of related. Since I was talking about Yugoslavia at the beginning, it's important to, to keep in mind the differences uh, between America and Yugoslavia, and there are a few. <laughs> there are not near as many as, well, it's complicated. I'd like to say that I that I want to see a lot of differences between America and Yugoslavia because of what happened to Yugoslavia. On the other hand, I would love to see a lot of similarities because I love Yugoslavia, and I love... Uh, it has many saving graces that America doesn't, it also, there were some good things that did happen there uh, as communism ended. It wasn't all bad. So, anyway, the, 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 main, the big difference that I see uh, is that in Yugoslavia, you had a situation that sort of mimicked World War II on a smaller scale in the sense that you had the most powerful ethnic group in the area perceiving itself as the most victimized ethnic group in the area. And now, when I say most powerful, not only did Serbians have most of the weapons and most of the military personnel, they also had a huge population advantage. I believe Serbs make up almost 50% of uh, former Yugoslavia. They did in the old days, anyway. Well, in America, uh, the most aggrieved, active, angry ethnic group, if there is one, would be black folks. 
and they don't constitute a majority of the population, so it simply doesn't replicate World War II or uh, Serbo-Slavia on, on, on the same kind of scale. It is true that black folks, I think, are a lot more powerful than they realize they are, and that they are more appreciated than they believe they are. And there are a lot of elements within the black community, the uh, official spokesperson types, the official organizations, that have mentalities which remind me of the the, um, the Serbian nationalists. You know, the the defensiveness, the militancy, the violent culture. It's there. But it's only a minority of the black community, and it's not connected to uh, a political state. There's no state inside the United States that sort of represents those sort of militant interests. So, anyhow, I just don't see the same kind of threat. There is a balkanization possibilities in the United States, but people who see themselves as the aggrieved minority, in many cases, really are the aggrieved minority. And black folks really are heavily mistreated inside the United States. In some ways, it's, it's you know, comforting to me to see them standing up for themselves. I just wish that it was the, the government that they were standing up against as opposed to random individuals or ethnic groups. And again, I can't so this is not something I can say about most black folks, because most black folks are not particularly racist. It's just that there's a stronger undercurrent of racism, I think, in the black community than there is uh, in the Hispanic or white community. If there is such a thing as the Hispanic or white community, there are, technically kind of isn't and shouldn't be. Anyway, that's a key difference. You don't have the dominant group in America the dominant ethnicity anyway, perceiving itself as the weak, persecuted minority. That may not be enough to save us, but it's a difference with Yugoslavia that we should be glad for. This Ridley O sponsored by friends of BitcoinStore.com. Half a million items for sale, often cheaper than Amazon. The easiest way to convert your bitcoins into real world stuff. They're privacy friendly, you don't even have to give your name. Bitcoinstore.com